Hey you guys, today I'll be reviewing the Creality Falcon 2 40 watts laser machine. Now, usually companies reach out to me and they ask me if I would like to review their lasers. With this one, it was a little bit different. I was the one that reached out to Creality and asked them if they would be willing to send me this uh, item so I can review it for you guys. And not only that they said yes and they sent it to me, they also gave me a 20% coupon code for you to use. So if you use the link in the description below and the code 20FALCON, you will get 20% off when you purchase the 40 watts or the 22 watt machine. So make sure you check that link in the description below if you're interested in purchasing this. Now, they also sent me the honeycomb grid and the cover, the Creality cover for the machine. And I believe these are not included with the machine when you purchase it. You have to purchase separately, but they did send it to me, so I will be using it for these demonstrations. Now, when you purchase the machine, it comes pretty much assembled. The only thing you need to do is plug in the cables and put in the laser module. The laser module is really easy to put in. It just has these two thumb screws that you loosen up, and then these tracks fit onto these tracks, and it's just that easy of installing. Now these two thumb screws are also used for focusing and the way it works you have the material under and then you have this focusing block and for engraving you will use this step over here and also you will use the same step for cutting material uh, up to three millimeter then if you cut material thicker than three millimeter like from four to six you will use this step and then for really thick materials you will use this step over here and what these steps are doing, they're just basically defocusing the laser so it's focused more inside of the wood and it can cut a lot deeper and better. And I really like this kind of um, focusing block so much better than let's say the longer one where it's just that metal tube. So to focus, you'll put the, for engraving, you'll put the block under and you loosen these two thumb screws. And then you lower the focus and tighten it back up and remove the focusing block. Now, looking at the machine in the front, you just have the normal simple interface, a few buttons. I do not use uh, these buttons because I like to control the laser straight from my computer. You have the emergency stop. If you push it down, it uh, stops automatically. And then to, re to start it again, you have to twist and it releases back up. You have the keys for if you have small children and they like to push buttons and you want to make sure they can never turn this laser on, then you can lock it, take away the keys and nobody will be able to use the laser unless they have the keys. On the left side of the machine, you will have the port for attaching your air pump. It does come with an air pump. It's your typical fish tank kind of air pump. It works really, really well. And then you also have a dial here for controlling the flow of your air pump. If you go all the way down, the air pump is off. If you go all the way up, it is a maximum airflow, and then you can go anywhere in between. On the right side of the machine, you have a slot for the SD card if you choose to use an SD card for your uh, files. And then you have a USB-C port for connecting your computer. You have where you plug in your power cable and then your on and off switch. Now on the laser module itself, let me see if I can show you this. You have two lights here, one that says precise, one that says normal and a button. If you hold down this button, it will toggle between the normal and precise. And I'll tell you more about that in a second. And then you also have a USB-C port over here if you want to plug the laser module straight into your computer to do software update. On the front, you have three lights over here that are off right now because my laser is not powered on. You have the air, fire, and lens. And what this does is when you turn the machine on, there all three of them are green. If you, let's say, you turn the airflow off or very low power, it will turn red. The fire, if it detects a fire, it will turn red. If um, not, it's normally in green. And then the lens light, it will let you know when your lens gets dirty. If the lens is clean and it's working properly, it's focusing properly, it will stay green. At the moment it gets dirty from debris and so on, which all laser uh, lenses will get dirty, you need to clean them regularly, it will turn red and that's when you know you need to clean your lens. 
Now this machine also has limit switches and all the safety sensors. If you bump it, it stops, or if it falls off the table or you know, bad things happen, which is pretty typical with all high-end lasers. Now you're probably wondering, what is that toggle button on the top of the laser module? Where that button toggles the laser between being a 40 watt laser to turn it into a 22 watt laser. You might wonder why is that important and why would you want to have a 22 watt laser when you paid for a 40 watt laser? Well, it's about the curve of the beam, the size of your laser beam. When it's in 40 watt mode, the normal mode, your curve of the beam is 0.1 by 0.15. When you toggle it into the 22 watt laser module, the curve becomes a lot smaller. It becomes a 0.06 by 0.1. And uh, that is important when you do very detailed engraving. You will have a smaller laser beam, so that means you can get a lot more details. Imagine um, you're trying to draw a portrait and you're using a mechanical pencil versus a Sharpie. If you use a mechanical pencil, it has a lot finer tip, you'll be able to draw a lot more detailed work than if you're trying to use a Sharpie. So the same thing with lasers, the smaller the beam, the more detailed uh, work you can do, where the bigger the beam, the you know, less detail you will get into your engraving. Now, all the testing I did, I kept my laser into the normal mode, the ones I will be showing you. And my first engraving test was of this cute little fox. And I use it in normal mode. I use speed 600, power 20. So you can see it does not take much power at all. And um, this is the first engraving I've done with this machine. Then this fox doesn't have that much detail, so I decided to go um, take a different file. So I did this logo that I have. This is my dog groomer's logo that I'm making a sign for them. And uh, I had to stop the machine here as I was going off the material. I didn't really frame it. I just kind of went for it to test it. But for this one, I use 600 speed, 25 power, still in normal mode, plenty of detail. And, you know, it did a, it did a great job for the engraving, even though it's a 40 watt laser. So that is the engraving. Then I did another engraving test. I used some, that was just two millimeter plywood. But then I took some hard maple and did another engraving. I'll put some clips of this uh, as I was doing it. And the reason I did this engraving, I used a 700 speed for 30% power. And I did this to test if the air assist on or off makes a difference. I know a lot of people believe that you should turn the air assist off when you engrave and turn it on when you cut. Now I've tested many, many lasers and I prefer to keep my air assist on at all time of full speed. And the reason for that is because air assist job, it's very important for keeping your lens clean. And um, if you don't keep it clean, then it gets dirty, it gets out of focus, it can crack, it can damage your lens. And uh, I was testing this file here by, you will see it in the clip I'll put on, the light for the air will go red, then green, then red. What I was doing, I was turning the um, air assist off for a section, so the whole trunk has air assist off. And then I turned it on for a section, then I turned it off for a section, then on. And there's honestly zero difference on the engraving. It did not make a difference at all. I cannot tell you where the engraving goes on or off. It looks all the same. So my opinion is just leave the air assist on at all time. It will do you more good than bad. Then I tried to do some engraving on a stainless steel card. And I kept the powers and the speed really slow because I wanted to get the colored engraving. I was not so interested on the black engraving. And this thing can engrave all the colors of the rainbow. And I don't know if it picks up in here. I will insert another clip or maybe I'll try to get better light. But this thing has all the colors you could imagine, all the blues, all the reds, the yellows. And I'm not sure this will pick up on camera here, but I will insert a clip where you can see the colors better. And I engraved it on both sides. I used some setting on one side. Oh, maybe there you go. The light will show you now there. So I used some settings on this side and then some other settings on this side. I was trying to get more blues. So anyway, I'll insert the picture of that. Then I went into the cutting tests. Now this is where this machine shines when it comes to cutting materials. 
and um, I already filmed the cutting test I'm going to insert that clip but before I do that I want to show you the way I've done the testing and uh, because when I have the machine on and such it's pretty loud so I won't be able to talk where I wasn't able to talk because I told you I already filmed that and um, when I will show the clip you will see on every piece of material that I use for testing on one side I wrote the thickness of the material and what kind of material it is I should put it like this no no like that so for example this is an 8 inch walnut and then I will flip the material and you will see the settings I use so I used 100% power 20 speed and I did that for every single piece of material that I used that way you will know exactly what I'm cutting and what speed also I should mention I only used one pass for all these testings I've never cut anything with two passes with this just one pass because I wanted to see what can really cut with one pass and I took materials from one eighth of an inch all the way to three quarter inch poplar now when you see the footage you will see me putting the material inside first of course I will show you the what material it is the settings I'll put the material materials on the laser bed and then you will see the laser move back and forward that's just me framing it to make sure that the laser will go over the material and cut it and then you'll see the laser go on and take one pass and see if it cuts or not the material
Now, as you saw, this machine is an absolute beast when it comes with cutting material. It cut through a three quarter inch pl uh, poplar with one pass, like, like it was nothing. I think I could have even went a little bit faster or, you know, um, lower power and it would have still cut it with absolutely no problem. So I thought to myself, well, I have another 40 watt laser. I have my Xtool S1 40 watt. Um, the same settings should probably cut the same three quarter inch poplar, which I've never tried to cut it into my Xtool. So I wanted to do the test to see if my fancy Xtool machine can do it. So I took the three quarter inch poplar and put it into my Xtool S1 40 watt machine. And I tried to put the same settings, but Xtool software would only allow me to do one or two speed. I cannot do 1.7. So I decided to go with one, which is a lot slower. So it should cut a lot deeper and better. So I did that and as you will see in this clip, it did not cut all the way through. And uh, this is the material that I cut the three quarter inch poplar with my X tool 40 watt. And then here is the one that we cut with the Creality Falcon 240 watt. Now you will also notice that the Creality gave a really clean cut where the X tool had some charring and some fibers that were not all the way cut. So I believe this Creality Falcon 240 watt machine, it is the most powerful diode laser right now on the market when it comes to cutting. I apologize, you guys. I had to come inside because my construction workers started work and it's very, very loud. You can even hear it from here, but it's a little bit quieter and I can, you know, finish filming this video. Now it's important to understand that no laser is perfect. They all fall short somewhere. And I think this laser is falling short when it comes to engraving. And I'm not talking about just normal engraving for logos and signs and whatever. Even I'm talking about doing really fine engraving like a grayscale engraving. If you are doing, uh, if you're buying this laser specifically for engraving, I think you're better off with the 22 watt version. But if you want it for cutting, this is probably the best diode laser right now on the market when it comes to cutting. The most powerful. You saw how it cuts through three quarter inch hardwood with absolutely no problem. So it's fantastic for cutting. Now you might be wondering, well, how about that toggle button on the top where you can just turn it into a 22 watt laser? And although that gives you a little bit better, finer engraving, it is not the same like the 22 watt. If you put them head to head, you will see that the 20 watt laser has an advantage over the 40 watt when it's in 22 watt mode. So it's really, you have to think about it before you purchase this laser, what are you going to use it for? If you're purchasing it for mostly engraving and just some cutting of thin materials, then I think the 22 watt, it's a better laser for you. If you are purchasing this laser for cutting thicker materials and making boxes or signs or so on, then I think the 40 watt laser, it's really the better one when it comes to cutting. I hope this was helpful to you and you learned something new. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Skylar Ewing and I'll see you in my next video.